Hello and welcome to another AIC video. Today we're going to be answering a specific question that one of you had for me on my HP EliteBook that we upgraded to a Core i7. So when I upgraded this computer, one of the things I mentioned in the video is that I upgraded to a 35 watt CPU. There's only one Core i7 that's a 4 core 8 thread 35 watt CPU. That's what I put in here. And the reason why I did that is so I could keep the temps under control. This is a fairly small machine and it doesn't have a whole lot of fan or heat sink to manage that. In fact, here I'll even open up and show you. This is all the heat sink you get over it. And then of course you have the heat sink over here and the fan. It's not a lot to dissipate that heat. So by sticking with a 35 watt CPU, my goal was to manage the temperatures better. Now I didn't actually go into temperatures and that's my fault. I should have definitely addressed that when doing my initial video to show you what the temperature temperatures look like after the upgrade. Because one of the things when I, about the same time I upgraded this, I also upgraded a Lenovo uh, ThinkPad T420 to an i7, but there were no 35 watt CPUs in the second gen Core i7 line that were compatible. And so it has a 45 watt CPU and it definitely struggles with heat a little bit. That laptop gets up to about 92 degrees, uh, 93 degrees when you're really pushing it. So well, let's go ahead and we'll flip the camera around and we'll do some run benchmarks with this system. Uh, I also do it with this under here as well, just to see if this cooling pad makes any difference. So let's go ahead and flip the camera around and get to some benchmarks. All right, so we're back. The computer is booted up. And obviously, because of the brightness of the screen and everything, uh, it's a little bit darker than uh, it looks to me. Uh, it's just the camera adjusting for the brightness in the room and the brightness of the screen. Anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load up CPU ID hardware monitor. And we're just going to grab these temperatures. We'll close that. All right, we have the 3632QM. That is the only 32, or excuse me, 35 watt uh, core i7. That is a four core, eight thread processor. Go ahead and bring up task manager here so we can see that. And we will bring up Cinebench. Now, while this is coming up, just if you're at all curious, I'm recording this uh, October 5th of 2020. This laptop is actually currently for sale on Amazon or on eBay. Excuse me. It is for sale on eBay. Unfortunately, I can't keep every laptop I, I test or, or work with uh, simply because I have to be able to afford to do other things and I can't store it all either. So if you're interested in this laptop, there is a link in the video description to buy it on eBay, if that link is not there, or if it's much after um, November, probably is for sale or probably has been sold. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and run the benchmark and we will bring up our temperatures and we'll just real quick view, we'll clear the min max. All right. So the one thing you'll notice is we're starting out at 2,893 megahertz. And this actually does pretty well at keeping that fairly stable. And as far as the temperature, we'll keep the temperature up here for both the CPU and GPU just because they're the same chip. But just so that you can see what that looks like. And we're hitting 100% there on the CPU. And we'll do a whole uh, test on this. So we'll be back. I'll keep this recording, but obviously I'll speed through it. Uh, and then we'll take an evaluation at the end.
All right, and we are just finishing up now. We'll get our final score of 1,111. That's a pretty, pretty decent score. But more importantly, we can see how quickly that temperature comes back down now. Uh, it should return back to the mid to low 50s temperature-wise. Um, it did max out uh, as a package at 84 degrees. Uh, the hottest cores were 83 degrees. So that's pretty good for pushing a system uh, hard uh, in a synthetic benchmark. Uh, very rarely will you be pushing it very hard like that in most workloads. Um, when I was testing this earlier, I opened up a bunch of web pages, played some YouTube videos, streamed some uh, stuff off of uh, Disney Plus, and it all performed basically the same. It, it didn't get much above ambient temp or me, uh, idle temperatures for that. Uh, it stayed under uh, 65 degrees uh, on the package. We'll go ahead, it's had a chance to cool off now, and we'll just start it again just to get our temps and see that they stay there. We won't run a full test again just because of time. And you can see those temperatures are bumping right back up again. Now the person who asked this question sent me a link to an article. The article is very interesting. The person completely hacked their laptop up uh, to get better temperatures. And I definitely understand wanting to get better temperatures uh, on your system. But I think it has more to do with the fact that you use good thermal paste. I'm using, I believe, Noctua or uh, Arctic 5 uh, Ceramic on this, depending on what I had when I did it. I don't remember off the top of my head. And uh, making sure that your CPU cooler is mounted correctly, that your fan is in good working order, as well as your heatsink uh, fins are clean. You do not want to be trying to push a, a faster CPU. The other thing is, is to keep your thermal load within spec. So this laptop sh shipped with a Core i5 that was a 35 watt CPU. It was designed to cool a 35 watt CPU. I don't think this laptop was sold with a Core i7. At least I haven't found one on the used market with a Core i7. So if they were sold with one, it was very, very rare. Um, but in this case, I decided to stick with that 35 watts and have been able to keep the system quite cool. And it is fairly, a fairly good performing machine. At least I have no complaints on its performance. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave that down in the description down below. I'll do my best to answer those. Again, this laptop at the time of this recording is up for sale on eBay. So if you're interested in it, check out the link in the description. If that link isn't there, sorry, it's old. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day. And before I forget, the cooling pad had no appreciable difference on the temperature whatsoever. I did test that and it basically might as well have not existed. The nice thing about it is it's more like a stand, raise the computer up off the uh, table because this laptop does vent to the right side of the computer which is where I use the mouse if I'm gaming, something like that. So it kind of raised it up above so it didn't cook my hand, <laughs> exhausting onto my hand when gaming. So that's basically all this is good for is just lifting up, making sure it has good airflow, but also just moving where it vented out of the system. Anyways, that is the end. Again, thank you for watching. Hope you have an amazing day.